Animal Locomotion, Wikipedia Article Audio Animal Locomotion, in ethology, is any of a variety of movements or methods that animals use to move from one place to another. Some modes of locomotion are self-propelled, e.g., running, swimming, jumping, flying, hopping, soaring and gliding. There are also many animal species that depend on their environment for transportation, a type of mobility called passive locomotion, e.g., sailing, kiting, and rolling. Animals move for a variety of reasons, such as to find food, a mate, a suitable microhabitat, or to escape predators. For many animals, the ability to move is essential for survival and, as a result, natural selection has shaped the locomotion methods and mechanisms used by moving organisms. For example, migratory animals that travel vast distances typically have a locomotion mechanism that costs very little energy per unit distance, whereas non-migratory animals that must frequently move quickly to escape predators are likely to have energetically costly, but very fast, Locomotion Etymology Locomotion in different media The anatomical structures that animals use for movement, including cilia, legs, wings, arms, fins, or tails, in various modes and through various media are sometimes referred to as locomotory organs or locomotory structures. The term locomotion is formed in English from Latin loco from a place plus motio motion, a moving. Animals move through, or on, four types of environment, aquatic, terrestrial, fossorial, and aerial. Many animals for example semi-aquatic animals, and diving birds regularly move through more than one type of medium. In some cases, the surface they move on facilitates their method of locomotion. In water, staying afloat is possible using buoyancy. If an animal's body is less dense than water, it can stay afloat. This requires little energy to maintain a vertical position, but requires more energy for locomotion in the horizontal plane compared to less buoyant animals. The drag encountered in water is much greater than in air. Morphology is therefore important for efficient locomotion, which is in most cases essential for basic functions such as catching prey. A fusiform, torpedo-like body form is seen in many aquatic animals, though the mechanisms they use for locomotion are diverse. The primary means by which fish generate thrust is by oscillating the body from side to side, the resulting wave motion ending at a large tail fin. Finer control, such as for slow movements, is often achieved with thrust from pectoral fins. Some fish, e.g. the spotted ratfish and batiform fish use their pectoral fins as the primary means of locomotion sometimes termed labriform swimming. Marine mammals oscillate their body in an up and down direction. Other animals, e.g. penguins, diving ducks, move underwater in a manner which has been termed aquatic flying. Some fish propel themselves without a wave motion of the body, as in the slow-moving seahorses and gymnotus. Other animals, such as cephalopods, use jet propulsion to travel fast, taking in water then squirting it back out in an explosive burst. Other swimming animals may rely predominantly on their limbs, much as humans do when swimming. Though life on land originated from the seas, terrestrial animals have returned to an aquatic lifestyle on several occasions, such as the fully aquatic cetaceans now very distinct from their terrestrial ancestors. Aquatic Dolphins sometimes ride on the bow waves created by boats or surf on naturally breaking waves. 
Benthic locomotion is movement by animals that live on, in, or near the bottom of aquatic environments. In the sea, many animals walk over the seabed. Echinoderms primarily use their tube feet to move about. The tube feet typically have a tip shaped like a suction pad that can create a vacuum through contraction of muscles. This, along with some stickiness from the secretion of mucus, provides adhesion. Waves of tube feet contractions and relaxations move along the adherent surface and the animal moves slowly along. Some sea urchins also use their spines for benthic locomotion. Swimming Crabs typically walk sideways. This is because of the articulation of the legs, which makes a sidelong gait more efficient. However, some crabs walk forwards or backwards, including Rhinonids, Libania emarginata and Micturus platycheals. Some crabs, notably the Porcinidae and Matutidae, are also capable of swimming, the Porcinidae especially so as their last pair of walking legs are flattened into swimming paddles. Astomatopod, Nanoschia decemspinosa can escape by rolling itself into a self-propelled wheel and somersault backwards at a speed of 72 rpm. They can travel more than 2 m using this unusual method of locomotion. Vilela, the by-the-wind sailor, is a nadarian with no means of propulsion other than sailing. A small rigid sail projects into the air and catches the wind. Vilela sails always align along the direction of the wind where the sail may act as an aerofoil, so that the animals tend to sail downwind at a small angle to the wind. Benthic While larger animals such as ducks can move on water by floating, some small animals move across it without breaking through the surface. This surface locomotion takes advantage of the surface tension of water. Animals that move in such a way include the water strider. Water striders have legs that are hydrophobic, preventing them from interfering with the structure of water. Another form of locomotion is used by the basilisk lizard. Aquatic surface Gravity is the primary obstacle to flight. Because it is impossible for any organism to have a density as low as that of air, Flying animals must generate enough lift to ascend and remain airborne. One way to achieve this is with wings, which when moved through the air generate an upward lift force on the animal's body. Flying animals must be very light to achieve flight, the largest living flying animals being birds of around 20 kilograms. Other structural adaptations of flying animals include reduced and redistributed body weight, fusiform shape, and powerful flight muscles, there may also be physiological adaptations. Active flight has independently evolved at least four times, in the insects, pterosaurs, birds, and bats. Insects were the first taxon to evolve flight, approximately 400 million years ago followed by pterosaurs approximately 220 Maya, birds approximately 160 Maya, then bats about 60 Maya. Aerial Rather than active flight, some arboreal animals reduce their rate of falling by gliding. Gliding is heavier than air flight without the use of thrust, the term volplaning also refers to this mode of flight in animals. This mode of flight involves flying a greater distance horizontally than vertically and therefore can be distinguished from a simple descent like a parachute. Gliding has evolved on more occasions than active flight. There are examples of gliding animals in several major taxonomic classes such as the invertebrates, reptiles, amphibians, mammals. Some aquatic animals also regularly use gliding, for example, flying fish, octopus and squid. 
The flights of flying fish are typically around 50 meters, though they can use updrafts at the leading edge of waves to cover distances of up to 400 m. To glide upward out of the water, a flying fish moves its tail up to 70 times per second. Several oceanic squid, such as the Pacific flying squid, leap out of the water to escape predators an adaptation similar to that of flying fish. Smaller squids fly in shoals, and have been observed to cover distances as long as 50 m. Small fins towards the back of the mantle help stabilize the motion of flight. They exit the water by expelling water out of their funnel, indeed some squid have been observed to continue jetting water while airborne providing thrust even after leaving the water. This may make flying squid the only animals with jet-propelled aerial locomotion. The neon flying squid has been observed to glide for distances over 30 m, at speeds of up to 11.2 m s. Active flight Soaring birds can maintain flight without wing flapping, using rising air currents. Many gliding birds are able to lock their extended wings by means of a specialized tendon. Soaring birds may alternate glides with periods of soaring in rising air. Five principal types of lift are used, thermals, ridge lift, lee waves, convergences and dynamic soaring. Examples of soaring flight by birds are the use of Ballooning is a method of locomotion used by spiders. Certain silk-producing arthropods, mostly small or young spiders, secrete a special lightweight gossamer silk for ballooning, sometimes traveling great distances at high altitude. Forms of locomotion on land include walking, running, hopping, or jumping, dragging and crawling or slithering. Here friction and buoyancy are no longer an issue, but a strong skeletal and muscular framework are required in most terrestrial animals for structural support. Each step also requires much energy to overcome inertia, and animals can store elastic potential energy in their tendons to help overcome this. Balance is also required for movement on land. Human infants learn to crawl first before they are able to stand on two feet, which requires good coordination as well as physical development. Humans are bipedal animals, standing on two feet and keeping one on the ground at all times while walking. When running, only one foot is on the ground at any one time at most, and both leave the ground briefly. At higher speeds momentum helps keep the body upright, so more energy can be used in movement. Jumping can be distinguished from running, galloping, and other gaits where the entire body is temporarily airborne by the relatively long duration of the aerial phase and high angle of initial launch. Many terrestrial animals use jumping to escape predators or catch prey however, Relatively few animals use this as a primary mode of locomotion. Those that do include the kangaroo and other macropods, rabbit, hare, jerboa, hopping mouse, and kangaroo rat. Kangaroo rats often leap 2 m and reportedly up to 2.75 m at speeds up to almost 3 m s. They can quickly change their direction between jumps. The rapid locomotion of the banner-tailed kangaroo rat may minimize energy cost and predation risk. Its use of a move-freeze mode may also make it less conspicuous to nocturnal predators. Frogs are, relative to their size, the best jumpers of all vertebrates. The Australian rocket frog, Litteria nasuta, can leap over 2 meters, more than 50 times its body length. Gliding Other animals move in terrestrial habitats without the aid of legs. Earthworms crawl by a peristalsis, the same rhythmic contractions that propel food through the digestive tract. Soaring 
Due to its low coefficient of friction, ice provides the opportunity for other modes of locomotion. Penguins either waddle on their feet or slide on their bellies across the snow, a movement called tobogganing, which conserves energy while moving quickly. Some pinnipeds perform a similar behavior called sledding. Thermals and convergences by raptors such as vultures, ridge lift by gulls near cliffs, wave lift by migrating birds, dynamic effects near the surface of the sea by albatrosses. Some animals are specialized for moving on non-horizontal surfaces. One common habitat for such climbing animals is in trees, for example the gibbon is specialized for arboreal movement, traveling rapidly by brachiation. Another case is animals like the snow leopard living on steep rock faces such as are found in mountains. Some light animals are able to climb up smooth shear surfaces or hang upside down by adhesion using suckers. Many insects can do this, though much larger animals such as geckos can also perform similar feats. Species have different numbers of legs resulting in large differences in locomotion. Treadmills are used to allow animals to walk or run while remaining stationary with respect to external observers. This technique facilitates filming or recordings of physiological information from the animal. Motorized treadmills are also used to measure the endurance capacity of animals, race tracks lined with photocells or filmed while animals run along them are used to measure acceleration and maximal sprint speed. Kinematics is the study of the motion of an entire animal or parts of its body. It is typically accomplished by placing visual markers at particular anatomical locations on the animal and then recording video of its movement. The video is often captured from multiple angles, with frame rates exceeding 2000 frames per second when capturing high-speed movement. The location of each marker is determined for each video frame, and data from multiple views is integrated to give positions of each point through time. Computers are sometimes used to track the markers, although this task must often be performed manually. The kinematic data can be used to determine fundamental motion attributes such as velocity, acceleration, joint angles, and the sequencing and timing of kinematic events. These fundamental attributes can be used to quantify various higher level attributes, such as the physical abilities of the animal, neural control of locomotion, gait, and responses to environmental variation. These in turn, can aid in formulation of hypotheses about the animal or locomotion in general. Force plates are platforms, usually part of a trackway, that can be used to measure the magnitude and direction of forces of an animal's step. When used with kinematics and a sufficiently detailed model of anatomy, inverse dynamics solutions can determine the forces not just at the contact with the ground but at each joint in the limb, electromyography is a method of detecting the electrical activity that occurs when muscles are activated, thus determining which muscles an animal uses for a given movement. This can be accomplished either by surface electrodes or implanted electrodes. Furthermore, the intensity of electrical activity can correlate to the level of muscle activity, with greater activity implying greater force, sonomicrometry employs a pair of piezoelectric crystals implanted in a muscle or tendon to continuously measure the length of a muscle or tendon. This is useful because surface kinematics may be inaccurate due to skin movement. Similarly, if an elastic tendon is in series with the muscle, the muscle length may not be accurately reflected by the joint angle. Tendon force buckles measure the force produced by a single muscle by measuring the strain of a tendon. After the experiment, the tendon's elastic modulus is determined and used to compute the exact force produced by the muscle. However, 
this can only be used on muscles with long tendons. Particle image velocimetry is used in aquatic and aerial systems to measure the flow of fluid around and past a moving aquatic organism, allowing fluid dynamics calculations to determine pressure gradients, speeds, etc. Fluoroscopy allows real time X ray video for precise kinematics of moving bones. Markers opaque to X rays can allow simultaneous tracking of muscle length. Modern birds, though classified as tetrapods, usually have only two functional legs, which some use as their primary, bipedal, mode of locomotion. Few modern mammalian species are habitual bipeds whose normal method of locomotion is two legged. These include the macropods, kangaroo rats and mice, spring hare, hopping mice, pangolins, and homininan apes. Bipedalism is rarely found outside terrestrial animals though at least two types of octopus walk bipedally on the sea floor using two of their arms, so they can use the remaining arms to camouflage themselves as a mat of algae or floating coconut. Ballooning Terrestrial Jumping Peristalsis There are no three-legged animals though some macropods, such as kangaroos, that alternate between resting their weight on their muscular tails and their two hind legs, could be looked at as an example of tripedal locomotion in animals. Many familiar animals are quadrupedal, walking or running on four legs. A few birds use quadrupedal movement in some circumstances. For example, the shoebill sometimes uses its wings to right itself after lunging at prey. The newly hatched Watsine bird has claws on its thumb and first finger enabling it to dexterously climb tree branches until its wings are strong enough for sustained flight. These claws are gone by the time the bird reaches adulthood. A relatively few animals use five limbs for locomotion. Prehensal quadrupeds may use their tail to assist in locomotion and when grazing, the kangaroos and other macropods use their tail to propel themselves forward with the four legs used to maintain balance. Insects generally walk with six legs though some insects such as nymphalid butterflies do not use the front legs for walking. Arachnids have eight legs. Most arachnids lack extensor muscles in the distal joints of their appendages. Spiders and whip scorpions extend their limbs hydraulically using the pressure of their hemolymph. Soli fugues and some harvestmen extend their knees by the use of highly elastic thickenings in the joint cuticle. Scorpions, pseudoscorpions, and some harvestmen have evolved muscles that extend two leg joints at once. The scorpion Hadrarus arizonensis walks by using two groups of legs in a reciprocating fashion. This alternating tetrapod coordination is used over all walking speeds. Centipedes and millipedes have many sets of legs that move in metacrinal rhythm. Some echinoderms locomote using the many tube feet on the underside of their arms. Although the tube feet resemble suction cups in appearance, the gripping action is a function of adhesive chemicals rather than suction. Other chemicals and relaxation of the ampullae allow for release from the substrate. The tube feet latch onto surfaces and move in a wave with one arm section attaching to the surface as another releases. Some multi-armed, fast-moving starfish such as the sunflower sea star pull themselves along with some of their arms while letting others trail behind. Other starfish turn up the tips of their arms while moving, which exposes the sensory tube feet and eye spot to external stimuli. Most starfish cannot move quickly, a typical speed being that of the leather star, which can manage just 15 centimeters in a minute. Some burrowing species from the genera Astropectin and Luidia have points rather than suckers on their long tube feet and are capable of much more rapid motion, 
gliding across the ocean floor. The sand star can travel at a speed of 2.8 m per minute. Sunflower starfish are quick, efficient hunters, moving at a speed of 1 m slash min using 15,000 tube feet. Sliding Many animals temporarily change the number of legs they use for locomotion in different circumstances. For example, many quadrupedal animals switch to bipedalism to reach low-level browse on trees. The genus of Basiliscus are arboreal lizards that usually use quadrupedalism in the trees. When frightened, they can drop to water below and run across the surface on their hind limbs at about 1.5 m s for a distance of approximately 4.5 meters before they sink to all fours and swim. They can also sustain themselves on all fours while water walking to increase the distance traveled above the surface by about 1.3 meters. When cockroaches run rapidly, they rear up on their two hind legs like bipedal humans, this allows them to run at speeds up to 50 body length slash s, equivalent to a couple hundred miles per hour, if you scale up to the size of humans. When grazing, kangaroos use a form of pentapedalism but switch to hopping when they wish to move at a greater speed. Bipedal Ostrich Hexapedal Stick Insect Brachiation Walking and running Powered cartwheeling Octopedal locomotion by a spider Multi-legged millipede The Moroccan flick-flack spider uses a series of rapid, acrobatic flick-flack movements of its legs similar to those used by gymnasts, to actively propel itself off the ground allowing it to move both down and uphill, even at a 40% incline. This behavior is different than other huntsman spiders, such as Carparachne oreoflava from the Namib Desert, which uses passive cartwheeling as a form of locomotion. The flick-flack spider can reach speeds of up to 2 m s using forward or back flips to evade threats. Some animals move through solids such as soil by burrowing using peristalsis, as in earthworms, or other methods. In loose solids such as sand some animals, such as the golden mole, marsupial mole, and the pink fairy armadillo, are able to move more rapidly, swimming through the loose substrate. Burrowing animals include moles, ground squirrels, naked mole rats, tilefish, and mole crickets. Arboreal locomotion is the locomotion of animals in trees. Some animals may only scale trees occasionally, while others are exclusively arboreal. These habitats pose numerous mechanical challenges to animals moving through them leading to a variety of anatomical, behavioral, and ecological consequences as well as variations throughout different species. Furthermore, many of these same principles may be applied to climbing without trees, such as on rock piles or mountains. The earliest known tetrapod with specializations that adapted it for climbing trees, was Seminia, a synapsid of the late Permian, about 260 million years ago. Some invertebrate animals are exclusively arboreal in habitat, for example, the tree snail. Subterranean Brachiation, is a form of arboreal locomotion in which primates swing from tree limb to tree limb using only their arms. During brachiation, the body is alternately supported under each forelimb. This is the primary means of locomotion for the small gibbons and siamangs of Southeast Asia. Some New World monkeys such as spider monkeys and moriquis are semi-brachiators and move through the trees with a combination of leaping and brachiation. Some New World species also practice suspensory behaviors by using their prehensile tail, which acts as a fifth grasping hand.
Animal locomotion requires energy to overcome various forces including friction, drag, inertia and gravity, although the influence of these depends on the circumstances. In terrestrial environments, gravity must be overcome whereas the drag of air has little influence. In aqueous environments, friction becomes the major energetic challenge with gravity being less of an influence. Remaining in the aqueous environment, animals with natural buoyancy expend little energy to maintain a vertical position in a water column. Others naturally sink, and must spend energy to remain afloat. Drag is also an energetic influence in flight, and the aerodynamically efficient body shapes of flying birds indicate how they have evolved to cope with this. Limbless organisms moving on land must energetically overcome surface friction, however, they do not usually need to expend significant energy to counteract gravity. Newton's third law of motion is widely used in the study of animal locomotion, if at rest, to move forwards an animal must push something backwards. Terrestrial animals must push the solid ground. Swimming and flying animals must push against a fluid. The effect of forces during locomotion on the design of the skeletal system is also important, as is the interaction between locomotion and muscle physiology, in determining how the structures and effectors of locomotion enable or limit animal movement. The energetics of locomotion involves the energy expenditure by animals in moving. Energy consumed in locomotion is not available for other efforts, so animals typically have evolved to use the minimum energy possible during movement. However, in the case of certain behaviors, such as locomotion to escape a predator, performance is more crucial, and such movements may be energetically expensive. Furthermore, Animals may use energetically expensive methods of locomotion when environmental conditions preclude other modes. The most common metric of energy use during locomotion is the net cost of transport, defined as the amount of energy needed above baseline metabolic rate to move a given distance. For aerobic locomotion, most animals have a nearly constant cost of transport, Moving a given distance requires the same caloric expenditure, regardless of speed. This constancy is usually accomplished by changes in gait. The net cost of transport of swimming is lowest, followed by flight, with terrestrial limbed locomotion being the most expensive per unit distance. However, because of the speeds involved, Flight requires the most energy per unit time. This does not mean that an animal that normally moves by running would be a more efficient swimmer, however, these comparisons assume an animal is specialized for that form of motion. Another consideration here is body mass heavier animals, though using more total energy, require less energy per unit mass to move. Physiologists generally measure energy use by the amount of oxygen consumed, or the amount of carbon dioxide produced, in an animal's respiration. In terrestrial animals, the cost of transport is typically measured while they walk or run on a motorized treadmill, either wearing a mask to capture gas exchange or with the entire treadmill enclosed in a metabolic chamber. For small rodents, such as deer mice, the cost of transport has also been measured during voluntary wheel running. Energetics is important for explaining the evolution of foraging economic decisions in organisms, for example, a study of the African honey bee, A. M. scutellata, has shown that honey bees may trade off the high sucrose content of viscous nectar for the energetic benefits of warmer, less concentrated nectar, which also reduces their consumption and flight time. Passive locomotion in animals is a type of mobility in which the animal depends on their environment for transportation. 
the Portuguese man o war lives at the surface of the ocean. The gas-filled bladder, or pneumatophore, remains at the surface, while the remainder is submerged. Because the Portuguese man o war has no means of propulsion, it is moved by a combination of winds, currents, and tides. The sail is equipped with a siphon. In the event of a surface attack, the sail can be deflated, allowing the organism to briefly submerge. The wheel spider is a huntsman spider approximately 20 mm in size and native to the Namib desert of southern Africa. The spider escapes parasitic palm pilot wasps by flipping onto its side and cartwheeling down sand dunes at speeds of up to 44 turns per second. If the spider is on a sloped dune, its rolling speed may be 1 meter per second. A spider, or spiderling after hatching, climbs as high as it can, stands on raised legs with its abdomen pointed upwards, and then releases several silk threads from its spinnerets into the air. These form a triangle-shaped parachute that carries the spider on updrafts of winds where even the slightest breeze transports it. The Earth's static electric field may also provide lift in windless conditions. The larva of Chichindala dorsalis, the eastern beach tiger beetle, is notable for its ability to leap into the air, loop its body into a rotating wheel and roll along the sand at a high speed using wind to propel itself. If the wind is strong enough, the larva can cover up to 60 meters in this manner. This remarkable ability may have evolved to help the larva escape predators such as the Typhiid wasp Methoka. Arboreal Locomotion Energetics Members of the largest subfamily of cuckoo wasps, Chrysidinae, are generally kleptoporazids, laying their eggs in host nests where their larvae consume the host egg or larva while it is still young. Chrysidans are distinguished from the members of other subfamilies in that most have flattened or concave lower abdomens and can curl into a defensive ball when attacked by a potential host, a process known as conglobation. Protected by hard chitin in this position, they are expelled from the nest without injury and can search for a less hostile host. Fleas can jump vertically up to 18 cm and horizontally up to 33 cm, however, although this form of locomotion is initiated by the flea, it has little control of the jump, they always jump in the same direction, with very little variation in the trajectory between individual jumps. Passive Locomotion Although stomatopods typically display the standard locomotion types as seen in true shrimp and lobsters, one species, Nanoschia decemspinosa, has been observed flipping itself into a crude wheel. The species lives in shallow, sandy areas. At low tides, N. decemspinosa is often stranded by its short rear legs which are sufficient for locomotion when the body is supported by water, but not on dry land. The mantis shrimp then performs a forward flip in an attempt to roll towards the next tide pool. Endosem spinosa has been observed to roll repeatedly for 2 meters, but they typically travel less than 1 m. Again, the animal initiates the movement but has little control during its locomotion. Hydrozoans Arachnids Insects Crustaceans Animal transport Remoras Anglerfish Parasites Changes between media Fish Marine mammals Birds Changes during the life cycle Function Some animals change location because they are attached to, or reside on, another animal or moving structure. 
This is arguably more accurately termed animal transport. Remoras are a family of ray finned fish. They grow to 30 90 cm long, and their distinctive first dorsal fins take the form of a modified oval, sucker like organ with slat like structures that open and close to create suction and take a firm hold against the skin of larger marine animals. By sliding backward, the remora can increase the suction, or it can release itself by swimming forward. Remoras sometimes attach to small boats. They swim well on their own, with a sinuous, or curved, motion. When the remora reaches about 3 cm, the disc is fully formed and the remora can then attach to other animals. The remora's lower jaw projects beyond the upper and the animal lacks a swim bladder. Some remoras associate primarily with specific host species. They are commonly found attached to sharks, manta rays, whales, turtles, and dugongs. Smaller remoras also fasten onto fish such as tuna and swordfish, and some small remoras travel in the mouths or gills of large manta rays, ocean sunfish, swordfish, and sailfish. The remora benefits by using the host as transport and protection, and also feeds on materials dropped by the host. In some species of anglerfish, when a male finds a female, he bites into her skin and releases an enzyme that digests the skin of his mouth and her body, fusing the pair down to the blood vessel level. The male becomes dependent on the female host for survival by receiving nutrients via their shared circulatory system, and provides sperm to the female in return. After fusing, males increase in volume and become much larger relative to free-living males of the species. They live and remain reproductively functional as long as the female lives, and can take part in multiple spawnings. This extreme sexual dimorphism ensures, when the female is ready to spawn, she has a mate immediately available. Multiple males can be incorporated into a single individual female with up to eight males in some species, though some taxa appear to have a one male per female rule. Many endoparasites and ectoparasites, due to their parasitic behavior, are transported by other animals. For example, tapeworms attach themselves to the inside of the alimentary tracts of other animals and do not locomote within the animal. They do however depend on movement of the host to distribute their eggs. Other parasites may locomote within, or on, their host which in turn might be active or stationary. For example, an adult dog flea may crawl about the skin of its sleeping canine host, but when the dog awakes and moves, it could be argued the flea is being transported. Some animals locomote between different media, e.g., from aquatic to aerial. This often requires different modes of locomotion in the different media and may require a distinct transitional locomotor behavior. There are a large number of semi-aquatic animals. These represent the major taxons of mammals, birds, reptiles, and amphibians. Some fish use multiple modes of locomotion. Walking fish may swim freely or at other times walk along the ocean or river floor, but not on land. Amphibious fish, are fish that are able to leave water for extended periods of time. These fish use a range of terrestrial locomotory modes, such as lateral undulation, tripod-like walking, and jumping. Many of these locomotory modes incorporate multiple combinations of pectoral, pelvic, and tail fin movement. Examples include eels, mudskippers, and the walking catfish. Flying fish can make powerful, self-propelled leaps out of water into air, where their long, wing-like fins enable gliding flight for considerable distances above the water's surface. 
This uncommon ability is a natural defense mechanism to evade predators. The flights of flying fish are typically around 50 meters, though they can use updrafts at the leading edge of waves to cover distances of up to 400 m. They can travel at speeds of more than 70 km per hour. Maximum altitude is 6 m above the surface of the sea. Some accounts have them landing on ships' decks. When swimming, several marine mammals such as dolphins, porpoises, and pinnipeds, frequently leap above the water surface whilst maintaining horizontal locomotion. This is done for various reasons. When traveling, jumping can save dolphins and porpoises energy as there is less friction while in the air. This type of travel is known as porpoising. Other reasons for dolphins and porpoises performing porpoising include orientation, social displays, fighting, nonverbal communication, entertainment and attempting to dislodge parasites. In pinnipeds, two types of porpoising have been identified. High porpoising is most often near the shore and is often followed by minor course changes, this may help seals get their bearings on beaching or rafting sites. Low porpoising is typically observed relatively far from shore and often aborted in favor of anti-predator movements, this may be a way for seals to maximize subsurface vigilance and thereby reduce their vulnerability to sharks. Some whales raise their body vertically out of the water in a behavior known as breaching. Some semi-aquatic birds use terrestrial locomotion, surface swimming, underwater swimming and flying. Diving birds also use diving locomotion. Some birds have lost the primary locomotion of flight. The largest of these, ostriches, when being pursued by a predator, have been known to reach speeds over 70 km per hour, and can maintain a steady speed of 50 km per hour, which makes the ostrich the world's fastest two-legged animal. Ostriches can also locomote by swimming. Penguins either waddle on their feet or slide on their bellies across the snow, a movement called tobogganing, which conserves energy while moving quickly. They also jump with both feet together if they want to move more quickly or cross steep or rocky terrain. To get onto land, penguins sometimes propel themselves upwards at a great speed to leap out the water. An animal's mode of locomotion may change considerably during its life cycle. Barnacles are exclusively marine and tend to live in shallow and tidal waters. They have two nectonic larval stages, but as adults, they are sessile suspension feeders. Frequently, adults are found attached to moving objects such as whales and ships, and are thereby transported around the oceans. Animals locomote for a variety of reasons, such as to find food, a mate, a suitable microhabitat, or to escape predators. Animals use locomotion in a wide variety of ways to procure food. Terrestrial methods include ambush predation, social predation, grazing. Aquatic methods include filter feeding, grazing, ram feeding, suction feeding, protrusion and pivot feeding. Other methods include parasitism and parasitoidism. A variety of methods and equipment are used to study animal locomotion. These methods can be combined. For example, studies frequently combine EMG and kinematics to determine motor pattern, the series of electrical and kinematic events that produce a given movement. Food procurement Methods of study Galleries <laughs>